15 famous tribes in Africa. Africa may be westernized by European cultures and values, but everyone knows that Africa still has a unique cultural identity that stands out from other continents. This unique cultural identity is captured in the values and lifestyles of the tribes that are older than the time itself. The African continent has 54 countries and around 1.3 billion people. Much of the African population belongs to one of the estimated 3,000 tribes, each with their own distinct dialect and culture. In no particular order, here are some of the most famous tribes in Africa. But first, if you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Number 15. The Karo, Ethiopia. Living on the banks of the Omo River in southern Ethiopia, seemingly untouched by the outside world, is a small Karo tribe. For sustenance, they practice flawed retreat cultivation, growing beans and maize, breeding cattle and goats, and fishing. Their estimated population is about 2,000 people, and they are famous for their body painting. Tribe members are known to paint their bodies with a combination of white chalk, yellow mineral rock, iron ore, and charcoal. In addition, they often practice ritual scarification, choosing scars as an easy way to identify themselves. The scarification of the man's chest indicates that he has killed enemies from other tribes and he is highly respected within his community, according to Atlas of Humanity. The Karo women are considered particularly sensual and attractive if cuts are made deep into their chest and torsos and ash is rubbed in, creating a raised effect over time and thereby enhancing sexual beauty. Like their tribal neighbors the Hama, the Karo also practice a bull jumping ceremony to signify the coming of age of young men. 14. The Himba Namibia The Kunene region of northwest Namibia is home to the Himba people. The Himba descend from the southward migrating Herero of Angola. They are a semi-nomadic and pastoral tribe known to breed cattle and goats. Their population is estimated at about 50,000 people. They usually wear a soft leather loincloth and believe in a god called Mukuru, whom they communicate by lightning a flame called Okururo. Day-to-day -day task and traditional splits between the sexes with the women doing the hard task of carrying water, milking cows, building homes, and raising children while the men handle politics and tend livestock. This division even extends to the use of water for bathing, which is reserved exclusively for men. Women use herbs smoke from fire to cleanse their pores and maintain personal hygiene. Interestingly, the traditional clan structure of the Himba is bilaterally evident in only a handful of traditional peoples around the world. Bilateral descent means that every clan member belongs to two clans, that of the mother and that of the father. However, inheritance passes from the maternal uncle. Living in such a harsh environment, it is believed that this bilateral descent provides a better chance of survival. The most distinctive characteristic of the Himba is its unique adornment. The distinctive red, ochre body paint and elaborate hairstyles have become synonymous with any safari to the Kunene region of Namibia. Because of the striking appearance that this red paste creates, the Himba tribe of Namibia has become known as the Red People of Africa. Number 13. The Dogon, Mali The Dogon people are one of the most fascinating tribes in Africa. Descendants of ancient Egyptians, the Dogon people have extensive knowledge of astronomy and abstract concepts like spaceships. They have recordings of gods who came from the stars. They live in villages in good defensive locations on the central plateau of Mali and into Burkina Faso. It is thought that they originally headed from the north to avoid Islamization and their lives revolve around a traditional religion, though some are now Muslims and others Christians. Famous for their arts and their astronomical knowledge, the Dogon survive by growing crops and keeping livestock. Dating as far back as 3200 BC, the Dogon had already recorded evidence of Sirius, the brightest star, and its three separate star systems even though Sirius B was invisible to the naked eye. They also have multiple rituals that have been preserved over time like mass dances, art, wooden sculptures and architecture. Like the Egyptians, they believe their gods came from the stars. At this moment, there are still about 800,000 Dogon people. Number 12. The Yoruba, Nigeria With a population of over 40 million people, the Yoruba is undeniably the largest ethnic group in Africa. Members occupy the southwestern side of Nigeria as well as southern Benin but the majority comes from Nigeria. They have a rich history and cultural heritage tracking back to the old Oyo Empire. What is curious about the Yoruba culture is the widespread nature of it. It has transcended the borders of Nigeria to countries like USA and the Caribbean 
with each Yoruba sub-ethnic group having its own unique interpretation of history. They also have a higher birth rate of twins than any other ethnic group in the world. 11. The Tarek of the Sahara The Tarek are a large tribe of Berber ethnicity occupying huge areas of the Sahara Desert. They are nomadic in nature and as such can't be classified strictly as living in one specific country. This is because they typically migrate between Niger, Mali, Libya and Nigeria. Like most nomadic tribes, their movement depends on their livestock for them, typically camels, goats and cattle. The Tarek is an old tribe. Although fluent in Hausa and Arabic, they prefer to speak Tamashek as their main language. This dialect traces its root back to the Beba language, one of the oldest languages in the world. They are typically an Islamic society with different cultural influences. For instance, once a Tarek man reaches the age of 25, he is required to wear a veil. This ceremony is done by a religious official called the Marabout who wraps the veil around the man's head. Number 10. The Wodabi, Niger and Chad The Wodabi are a small subgroup of the Fulani ethnic group. They are traditionally nomadic cattle headers and traders in the Sahel, with migration stretching from southern Niger through northern Nigeria, northeastern Cameroon, southwestern Chad, western region of the Central African Republic, and the northeastern of the Democratic Republic of Congo. They are best known for their traditional festivals, Girwol. It is a festival for men looking for prospects in marriage. The men gives a whole new meaning to the concept of dresses to impress, wearing carefully crafted pieces and performing intricate dance moves of such large spectacle to female judges. They then choose the men they find the most attractive amongst the performers. Wudabi actually translates to people of the taboo, a name that probably stems from the fact that the Wudabi broke off the bigger Fulani tribe. However, their local language is called Fula. The Pygmies, Central Africa it is no secret that the continent of Africa has had its own fair share of civil war and unrest leaving multiple displaced persons without homes. Usually the term pygmy is derogatory for the pygmies of Central Africa. This tribe typically lives in the rainforest of Africa, leaving war-torn homes to find solace and peace in the jungle. This tribe isn't just one ethnic group, rather it is a composite of multiple ethnic groups. That is, Aka in Central African Republic, Baku in Southern Cameroon, Toa in Rwanda, and Mboli, Democratic Republic of Congo. The tribe has more than 170,000 people in the forest. Together, they are a cohesive group who see the forest as not only a place to build a new home, but also a place of worship. Number 8. Hausa, Nigeria The Hausa is one of the largest tribes in Africa with an estimated population of about 74 million, mostly based in Nigeria, with 64 million of them living there. However, they are also found in sizable numbers in Niger, Benin, Ivory Coast, Sudan, Ghana, Chad, Togo, Burkina Faso and Algeria. They are a diverse people that speak their own Hausa language. The origins of the Hausa can be traced back to at least the 7th century and the Hausa kingdoms. The Hausa people were divided into many kingdoms united by shared ancestry and each of the Hausa kingdoms became specially centers of the trade in Africa. Their primary exports were leather, gold and clothes. The Hausa were renowned for their own cloth weaving. The architecture is also beautiful and intricate while their cuisine is popular all over Africa. Notable Hausa include many sultans of Sokoto and also current footballer Ahmed Musa who plays for Nigeria. Number 7. The Bushman, son of Khoisan of Southern Africa. Known as the first people of South Africa, the Khoisan are renowned for their close connection to nature their nomadic lifestyle and their language that comprises of clicking sounds. Sadly, they are also synonymous with the plight of minorities in Southern Africa and have been variously haunted, exploited and pushed off their land. Traditionally, the Sun people were hunter gatherers who lived off the land, roaming vast tracts of bushveld all over Southern Africa. For various reasons including mining, farming and the creation of national parks, today they are restricted to small clusters around the Makadegadi Pan. The sun used pigments made from mineral deposits, ochres, blood and egg to fashion the delightful imagery of humans and animals. For many years, it was believed that the paintings were merely representations of everyday life and it is from caves in the Drankensberg Mountains that we know the area was home once to leopards, elands and elephants which are now extinct in the area. However, modern theories attribute the paintings of this African tribe to a much more exciting idea. It is believed that the caves were sacred sites, a little bit like cathedrals, used by shamans as an interface with the spirit realm. 
The depictions are both access points to these realms as well as records of the encounters. What anthropologists believe is that rock art is a pictorial representation of the famous trance dance. The magical trance dance is integral to the customs and beliefs of the Bushman. Also known as the healing dance, this ritual brings together the entire community. The dance has a number of functions, from healing sickness to dispelling what they call star sickness, which causes ill will, anger, argument, and jealousy. Number 6. The Samburu of Northern Kenya The Samburu tribe from North and Central Kenya are pastoralists from the Great Plains of Samburu region. They are very closely related to the Maasai people of Kenya and are also said to have migrated from the Nile region of North Africa. The Samburu people speak a dialect of the Ma language which they share with the Maasai. They raise primary cattle but also keep other livestock like goats, sheep and even camels. Because of the arid environments that they inhabit, this African tribe is traditionally nomadic. The Samburu diet, like the Maasai, consists of milk and animal blood, while eating is reserved for special occasions. The Samburu are renowned for their colorful clothing and their unique social structure. The men wear pink or black cloth in a manner similar to the Scottish kilt and adorn themselves with bracelets, anklets, and necklaces. The warrior age group or Moran is known to wear their hair in long braids. The women, on the other hand, keep their heads shaven and wear two clothes, one around the waist and the other around their chest. The cloth is usually blue or purple and the women adorn themselves further by applying ochre to their bodies in a fashion similar to the Himba of Namibia. The leaders are the oldest members of the society and they have the final say in all matters as well as possessing the power to curse younger members of the tribe. Number 5. The Southern Dembele Tribe of Southern Africa the Southern Dembele tribe is found in South Africa's northeastern provinces of Gauteng, Limpopo, and Mpumalanga, sharing some language with the Zulu. They have unique culture and beliefs. The Dembele's believe that illnesses are caused by spells or curses, an external force inflicted on the person. To cure illness, a sagoma, which is a type of traditional healer, needs to do battle with these forces using traditional herbal medicines and bone throwing. Both boys and girls go through initiation rites and initiation schools are held every four years. When the Mbele boys are about 18 years old, they are grouped into a regiment of Indanga. Whilst these shamanistic traditions are interesting, what truly makes the Southern Mbele unique is their artistic style. Not just clothes and bodily adornments, but homes too are decorated in striking geometric patterns filled in with color. Number 4. Hadzabe, Tanzania the Adzabi of Tanzania is a tribe of hunter-gatherers living in north-central Tanzania and perhaps the last true nomadic tribe in East Africa. There have been attempts to settle the Hadza since European contacts in the late 1800s and thereafter via several autonomous Tanzanian administrations. These efforts have generally failed and the Hadza continue to live in the same way as their forefathers did hundreds of years ago. The Hadzabi are a large egalitarian culture with no ruling hierarchy or inequalities in individual rank, and children are raised in a cooperative manner. Much of their time is spent on foraging and hunting. Women forage in larger groups for berries, fruit, and tubers, depending on availability. Hadza men usually forage individually, feeding themselves and bringing home fruit or honey when they can. They also hunt game using a bow and poisoned arrow, lying in wait overnight at watering holes. Number 3. Hama, Ethiopia the Omo Valley in southwest Ethiopia is a fertile region that is home to the Hama people. They are a pastoral tribe with a culture that places a high value on cattle. During the dry season, families move to live with their herds in grazing areas and survive primarily on milk and blood from the cattle. They are easily recognized for their body adornment with multitudes of colorful beads, necklaces and bracelets and for their distinctive hairstyles, curling their hair with a mixture of oak and butter. Controversial practices include ritual flogging of women by their husbands to prove devotion and the initiation rite of bull jumping performed by boys to allow them to marry. Number 2. The Maasai, Kenya, Tanzania The Maasai tribe are a tribe of warriors who trace their origins from migration from Sudan to Kenya and Tanzania along the Great Rift Valley. The tribe is nomadic in nature, choosing to stay in smaller homesteads. They build their way of life around their cattle, which they insist are gifts from their god Ngai. They use the cattle primarily as a measurement of wealth, as well as a source of food, even going as far as drinking the blood of the cattle for sustenance. 
Despite the pressures of the modern world, the Maasai have fought to preserve their way of life, and as a result, any East African safari is awash with the sight of colorful Maasai, herding their cattle, walking along roads, or dancing the Adumo. The Adumo is the jumping dance that is performed as part of the initiation rite when young adults become men. Accompanied by song, pairs of men take turns to see who can jump the highest. The ritual is performed to show prowess and fitness and it forms a part of a celebration when the boys become eligible bachelors. He who jumps the highest attracts the best bride. The vibrant colored cloth worn by the Maasai is known as shuka. Red is considered to be a sacred color and represents blood and is the basic color for all shuka. In addition to these qualities, it also protects the Maasai from wild animals. Orange is for hospitality, warmth and friendship. Blue is for the sky which provides the rains for the cattle. Green is nourishment and production and yellow is for fertility and growth. Together, these vibrant African clothes are what makes the Maasai so distinctive in East Africa. While in Western traditions, saliva is a strictly private and personal matter. In Maasai culture and tradition, it is considered extremely good luck to be shared. When shaking the hand of an elder, it is important to spit in one's palm and to ward off evil spirits. One must spit onto a newborn baby's head. Spitting is one thing, drinking blood completely another. Number 1. Zulu, South Africa With an estimated population of about 11 million people, Zulu is known to be the largest ethnic group in South Africa. They are descended from East African origins and over centuries migrated south during what is called the Great Bantu Migration. The Zulu rose into a formidable empire under the leadership of Shaka in the early 19th century. Under its leadership, the Zulu Kingdom expanded and played an important role in the history of South Africa. Over time, the Zulu developed a fearsome reputation that is still evident today. The Zulus of today are modern and progressive. While traditional clothing is reserved for special occasions, the Zulu retain strong connections with their ancestral and historical roots. As a people, the Zulu are said to be warm-hearted and hospitable, and it is to them that we owe the concept of Ubuntu. Ubuntu, the language of the Zulu people, means togetherness and a sense of unity. It also states that we are people not because of our individuality, but by virtue of our connections to other people, thus underlining the importance of relationships. The Zulu is also a modern tribe that embraces cultural practices. Men wear colorful wrappers, while the women wear beautiful breaded works. The Zulu are also renowned for their skilled craftsmanship from earthenware, pottery to weaving, but most notably their beadwork. Bright colored beads are woven into intricate patterns that are highly decorative but also functional. The Zulu nation is a proud one. They have open cultural villages such as Shakaland in KwaZulu Natal, where you can experience their culture firsthand. From traditional houses and dress to dancing, pottery, and beadwork, you can even help to brew traditional beer. But don't forget, the real Zulus are the ones you will meet at lodges, as guides, and on the South African streets. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed exploring these beautiful African tribes. Do you want us to go through any of these tribes in more depth? Leave a message in the box below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our video.